Welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to be doing a video that I cannot wait to be doing today. I'm starting it right now and that's a 24 hour readathon. We're going to see how many books I can read in 24 hours. You know the drill. I'm just excited to do one. It's been a while since I've done a 24 hour readathon. Let's do it. So I started the readathon officially at 12 the noon. It's now 12.18. I have not picked out my physical TBR, but for the past 20 minutes, I have been listening to an audiobook. So that's how I started the readathon. I'm reading The Inheritance Games, listening to The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. It's going well. I'm having a good time. My cats are currently cracked out of their mind, um, but we're gonna go pick the books I'm gonna read. I'm excited. Like, this is my favorite part, just picking up the books. We can ignore the fact that I moved. Oh my god, I moved the books again. Okay, we're not gonna talk about it. We're not gonna talk about it. I just keep moving things around. I have some in my mind that I know I wanna read, and then I don't know what else we can glean off of the shelves. Okay, so we're in a bit of a pickle. Okay, where's the one book that I know that I want to read? Where would I have put it? Know that I kind of want to read Cat Diary by Jinji Ito. I got this one for Christmas and I just think it's perfect because now that I have two cats, I just feel like this is the perfect time. Oh, speak of the devil. Do you think I should read this one? It's about cats. It's about two cats. It's a horror book about two cats. I think we're going to bypass the classics because... I'm just, I'm not really feeling any of them for a 24 hour readathon. Um, and I'm still trying to finish Monte Cristo. So yeah, let us see. There's this little mushroom man, it's so cute. Um, hmm, I don't know, I don't know. I think I'm gonna leave these. I don't really wanna spam these in 24 hours or binge them or whatever you wanna call it, so. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Is there anything down here that I want to read? I have really wanted to read A Living Soul for a while. I think I might keep that one out for now. Nietzsche? <laughs> Nietzsche, is it time? Am I in the mood for this? No, I'm not in the mood for that. Why did I think I was? Okay. Um... Oh, should I read the script for the Grand Budapest Hotel? That is one of my favorite films. I don't know, I also got the- okay, we're gonna put this as an option because that would be so fun. Okay, let's ignore this big pile because I don't think I'm gonna be able to take anything out of it. Um, over here, I think there might be something I wanna pick from this shelf. Um, hmm. I kinda just want like some happy books. Honestly, I would just like some happy books. Um, I have been wanting to pick up a thousand a thousand steps into night for a while so that is that is an option okay and then on this little lonely shelf um i've been really wanting to read this one agents of the four seasons i think i'm gonna bring this maybe I have picked a stack here of things that I want to read. So we have, of course, Cat Diary. Very excited. All I know is that this is about, I think, a new, no, 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 it's his fiance, and they move into a new house, and all of a sudden, two cats show up, which, like, I don't know if it's his fiance's cats, but it looks spooky. It looks creepy. He's like a dog person, so this just looks so cute. It looks so cute. Look at them. Um, yeah, so it's called Cat Diary, Yan and Moo. Those are the two cats. So this is my first Jinji Ito. I've actually never read Jinji Ito before. I don't know what I'm going to think, but I'm very excited. It looks perfect. And then I also pulled off A Living Soul by Yersild. This is a Swedish book, and it just looks so interesting. This is about a brain called Ypsilon. Like, it is about a human, I guess. A human being 
reduced to the most basic essentials, a naked one-eyed brain floating in an aquarium of nutritious liquid. And through his consciousness, we observe his obstinate struggles to maintain his freedom of action. It's kind of, it says it's about the big brother of technological progress, which is horrifying. This looks like it's exactly up my alley. I don't know if we'll get through all of this today. I don't know if it's the kind of book that I want to read in a 24-hour readathon, but it just looks so good. So that is that one. And then I also pulled off the Grand Budapest Hotel. This is just the screenplay by Wes Anderson. Um, I've been wanting to read this for a while. I love Grand Budapest. Again, I don't know if I want to read this in 24. I just don't know what I'm in the mood for. I don't know what I'm in the mood for at all. I'll just probably start picking them up and see, but yeah, it's just the screenplay of the film. I love this film. I love this movie so, so much. Also pulled off these three. So we have the light novel, Agents of the Four Seasons. This is where the Four Seasons are personified or they're almost like God status, I think. But how spring has disappeared from the land for 10 years, like spring goes missing and then spring comes back and it's about like the relationship between spring and winter. And then we also have A Thousand Steps Into Night. This one is said to be inspired a lot by Spirited Away. And the last one I just pulled off my little shelves in the front room is Of Love and Other Demons by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. I love, I love him so much. And this one sounds very, very interesting. This is about a girl who catches rabies, and I think it's about a bishop who falls in love with her. It's a doomed love affair between an unruly copper haired girl and the bookish priest sent to oversee her exorcism. What could go wrong? Is my stack, what do I want to start with? I think I might just start with Cat Diary. It looks so disturbing. I don't know if I want to do this. I also really want to read this. I feel like I'm in the mood for something sweet like this. We'll see. I'm going to start with one of these two. Let's, let's just start the readathon. It's now like 12.30, so let's go. It is now 1.50 and I finished Cat Diary. I finished Cat Diary and I liked it so much. This was so fun. This was so good. And now I'm so interested to read more Jinji Ito. I fell in love with this so much. I think this is so funny. If you have a cat, you're just gonna like get this. I think it's gonna speak to you. It's so hilarious. There's actually a lot of disturbing aspects of living with cats, a lot of unsettling things. And I think he's just so masterful at like touching upon it so much of this is about him because it is about the author Junji Ito and his wife and their two cats Yon and Moo so much of it in the beginning is about him trying to understand cats as like a proclaimed dog person and just not getting them but also just wanting to win their affection 
so much wanting to understand their world he spoke the truth and the whole time i was reading this first of all grendel like bit the whole grendel just put his teeth marks all into it and cal was screaming pawing at the door letting door to the bedroom and they were just being menaces while i was reading it this was so great i highly recommend um and it was so fun i just wish it i just wish there was more i wish it was longer i was laughing out loud which is very rare for me during a read of a book i'm also halfway through the inheritance games by jennifer lynn barnes i have five hours left to go on the audiobook so i don't know if i'll be able to finish it up today but this is about a girl named avery who is in her last year of high school she is pretty not well off she lives in her car but one day this very rich texan boy comes to her high school and he's like yo you need to come down to texas because my grandfather died and for some reason he left you in his will his grandfather turns out to be this billionaire named tobias hawthorne and avery's like i literally don't know your grandpa at all why would he put me in uh the will but she goes down there with her half sister and it turns out that tobias has left everything to her to avery and it's kind of about avery and then the four hawthorne grandchildren because he had four grandsons um it's about them trying to figure out like why trying to solve the mystery and obviously there's a lot of like changing allegiances drama tons of family drama gossip mysteries clues it's very knives out so yeah so far it's a little bit juvenile i want to say in like the puzzle aspect because it is ya but i'm liking the mystery of it all it's got good pacing and it's just something fun to listen to while i do random stuff so now that i'm done cat diary i don't know what i'm gonna pick up i don't know what i'm gonna pick up next i think i might just pick up agents of the four seasons honestly and start that one Twelve pages in. I am fighting. I'm fighting so hard to stay awake. I'm fighting so hard to stay awake. It is literally like two o'clock and I'm, I'm already gonking out. I don't know if I should have a nap now so that I can stay up kind of late tonight reading, but I'm really liking this so far. Like I'm only 12 pages in, but I'm like, oh, I can tell I'm gonna like this. For some reason, we don't know why, but spring has been missing from the land for a while and she is now back with her guard so like each of the personifications of the seasons or like i guess the gods and goddesses that represent four seasons they each have like a guard with them a retainer or something who kind of looks after them and it seems like spring and her retainer or her guard might have a relationship or might have something going on that is definitely not platonic and it's just like so far it's good like i'm only 12 pages in and i'm like really I'm into it. I'm really into it. That's weird. That's today. <laughs> That's weird. It's now 3.30. I got 50, ooh, 59% through the inheritance games. I'm on page 76 of Agents of the Four Seasons. I'm confused. I think this is written in quite a confusing way. So yeah. Okay, so our main character so far, who seems to be Spring, the goddess of Spring. She speaks very choppily, like her sentences are filled with constant ellipses which is fine, but I'm just a little bit confused the way that it is written, like it is constantly switching perspectives. We also learned that 10 years ago, Spring has been missing from the land for 10 years. Something happened and Spring couldn't fulfill like her duties to bring Spring to the land. And I think it was that she was kidnapped is what we're learning. Kidnapped by whom? I don't know. I just had a nice little shower. It's a couple hours later actually, but I finally kind of know more about what is going on in Agents of the Four Season. Unfortunately, I'm not really liking this like at all. 
um, and I just kept going to see if it would get better, if I would start to enjoy it more, but no, like the style is just really so not my thing. Also, if you can hear the washer in the background, you can, <laughs> because I'm not only playing how many books can I read today, I'm playing how many loads of laundry can I get done in 24 hours. Wow, it is kind of really loud, eh? So they are the agents of the four seasons, like spring, winter, autumn, and su summer. Oh my god. The spring, winter, autumn, and summer, they are all personifications of like the gods and goddesses of the seasons. But the thing is, I was saying about how she was kidnapped 10 years ago. In this world, there are, like it's the modern world, but it's like a different fantasy. It's an alternate universe, okay? In this world, there are people who want the agents to use their powers to um, combat natural disasters, to help people, to save people's lives, but the agents are under oath to only use their powers to actually bring about and create the season, like to initiate the transition from season to season. They're not allowed to use their powers for anything else, and so there are groups of people, like rebels, different groups who want to take the agents, kidnap them, and try to use them for different purposes, and that is where the conflict comes in in the world, because the agents are just trying to bring about the seasons and do their thing and like have good relations with each other. There are also like these agencies that oversee each agent, so like there's the agency of winter, of spring, of summer, and of fall, and each of them also have different purposes and motivations for acting in certain ways. We learned that spring's agency, something fishy's going on. I don't know if anyone is going to read this. I am not liking it. Like I said, the writing is just really all over the place, and I think because I also just learned that Agents of the Four Seasons, this is based on a manga, so it's like the manga has just been written into novel form and it's really not working because everything is just so overwrought and like it really just feels like the author is penning the individual art scenes and I'm not really getting a good sense of who any character is. Everything is just so dramatic, so high intensity that it feels like nothing matters that much also because there's a ton of flashback scenes inserted in between like the present day rituals that are going on to bring around spring now that she's finally back it just i don't know it's just not making good sense it's not easy to read actually um it's easy to read like i was saying before in that you can like get through it quickly but like the way that the scenes are stitched together just does not make good sense very very repetitive it also feels like nothing is happening like spring and sakura are wandering around doing this doing that and then we're constantly getting all these characters saying how upset they are or their feelings on spring's disappearance and her return but it just feels like build upon build for obviously a longer series but at this point i'm not going to continue it so i just don't care thankfully i am almost done i'm on page 284 it really just feels like the scenes are so long i think the manga series would be so much better to read probably so much more fun but it really just feels like every single scene drags on for so long for so long so thankfully i only have about 10 oh i actually only have like 10 or 15 pages left which is great but yeah unfortunately this one that i chose for the readathon was not a hit um at the same time i do have i'm 72 percent through the inheritance games things are picking up the pace relationships are going awry love triangles are forming it's just kind of fun it's just fun like i said the pacing is great this is really really good if you just want something fast entertaining i will say that the amount of like puzzles has not met my expectation for the amount of puzzles that I thought was going to be in this book because um, it is pitched as very much the stakes, thrilling twists, juicy secrets. I'm really just here for the drama of it all. I am really just here for the drama of it all. Like I was saying before, the games and the things that Avery has to solve along with the Hawthorne grandsons, they're not really that difficult. Two, uh, around three hours left of the audiobook, so I'll probably finish that tonight and then I will go through on Libby and see what else I can pick up. But for right now, I'm gonna sit down and just finish like the last 15 pages of this and then I really don't know what I'm in the mood for. Like I picked these four out as well, but now that I'm sat here finishing my second read of the readathon, um, 
none of these are really calling to me I had really high hopes for this, especially because you guys know how much I love winter and I was so excited for like the personification of winter. I thought there would be a lot of cool description, but it's just so jumbled. Like I can't tell you how jumbled up this is um, and I was just so excited at the beginning because I don't know, there's like descriptions of winter and stuff. The girl was captivated by the silver world. Her heart ached for it like a girl in love and I was just like, yes, but no. It is now like 9 30. i did end up getting to get a workout in and i actually have 15 minutes left on the audiobook for the inheritance games so i'm just about to finish that one up the twists and turns are twisting and they are turning am i really enjoying any of it that much not really and like obviously the big question behind the inheritance games the whole time has been why the heck would a random billionaire choose a seemingly random high school senior to inherit basically everything he owns? Like, did they know each other? Had they ever met previously? Was there a connection? Avery has never really known this secret that like her mother has been keeping. So there's always been a question of like, is the secret connected to the billionaire? And like the end of the book now is kind of wrapping some of this stuff up. It's not, honestly in my mind very satisfactory um and i'm not really liking the direction that it's going right now but i still have 15 minutes left so there's still i think some twists left things could still happen i think i will ultimately continue on with the series just like not right away it's not really something that i would rush to go out and read the second book but i think when i'm in the mood for like a good I think when I'm in the mood for like a fast-paced YA. After I finished um, Agents of the Four Seasons, I was looking through my pile of the four other books that I picked out and none of them were just calling at all and I just did not know what I was in the mood for, but I picked this off of my shelf just kind of randomly. This is Conspicuous Consumption by Thorstein Veblen. And I actually bought this one in Iceland. This is part of the Penguin great ideas book series which is fun they're just so they're so beautiful but this is a satire on capitalism and consumerism shallow materialistic class obsessed by clothes cars consumer goods and climbing the social ladder so i am currently six pages in to conspicuous consumption was it a good idea to start something a bit more heavy-handed a bit more um big brain at like 9 30 p.m no no it wasn't However, I am still in need of having like a good filling dinner. I made this like very filling protein smoothie that I'm almost done, but I think now I'm gonna make some tacos. I think I'm gonna read this. I'm like strangely weirdly in the mood for this right now. So we'll see because I am getting sleepy.
welcome to the morning of still the 24 hour relaunch. I hit the sack probably, probably at like midnight last night. Um, and I only have a couple more hours of the readathon this morning. Last night I did end up finishing The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. That ended up being my third book for the readathon and I only gave it three stars but like three stars is still a good rating. I still had a good time with it. I just wish it hadn't felt so juvenile. There is also quite a bit of like romance in The Inheritance Games if you go into it or if you're looking for that then there you go. It's probably gonna be perfect for you because obviously Avery does kind of get involved with some of the Hawthorne grandsons. I do wish that it wasn't always so obvious like who the main love interest was because from the moment they step on the page, you're like, okay, well, it's obviously gonna be this particular grandson. I think with a lot of YA as well, I'm always just kind of like, like who is the protagonist? Who is the main character? Not which character is it, but I'm like, who is she? I feel like Avery didn't really have a ton of personality positive things that i can say is that i really liked the big cast of characters and like as you keep reading the cast just keeps getting bigger and bigger i do think the pacing is pretty good uh the downside for me was the mysteries and the clues and like the scavenger hunt wild mystery chase that tobias hawthorne the billionaire the dead billionaire is supposed to be taking everyone on i thought the clues were weak the puzzles were a bit stupid <laughs> and i just wish it had all been a bit more meaningful not so much like the final outcome or the reason why avery is chosen and we do kind of learn a little bit about why she's chosen to inherit so much money at the end of the book but just the puzzles in and of themselves each grandson the four of them we have nash the oldest one he's probably my favorite he wasn't really in the book that much because he is the adult of the group and he kind of has a thing going on maybe with Avery's sister but I really like him um and then Grayson and Jameson are the two middle I guess and then Xander the baby the youngest of the group but they all have kind of different affinities obviously different personalities and I just wish we could have seen like more of that shine on the whole I enjoyed it like I said I won't be rushing out to read the second book but I did put the second book in my Libby list, so I will listen to it at some point. Obviously, this means that yes, I did just start another series. I'll not be taking questions at this time, but that was book number three, and I enjoyed my time. So after I finished listening to that, you guys saw that I picked up another physical book, and that is Conspicuous Consumption by Thorstein Veblen, which I was talking about a little bit last night. This mother trucker <laughs> put me to sleep. Put me to sleep. I probably should have seen that coming, but I was still kind of in the mood for this, and I am, and I am liking it, but geez, the Victorian prose is rough, and especially because it is a very dry satire, and Veblen is in part trying to imitate a lot of like dry textbook style writing as he satirizes the upper class, the leisure class, of his age. It is written a little bit like an anthropologist study on <laughs> the leisure class, which Veblen is like, you know what? All of you guys who are making fun of barbarianism and um, humanity as it was just coming into nomadic existence and getting things figured out and then all of you guys and gentlemen of the upper class who look down on what you deem as primitive cultures, like you are literally the same thing he's saying. He's saying there's not really that much of a difference. So I am 68 pages through, but wow, I was falling asleep so hard. And especially because the satire is very hidden. Like it is, a, it is a satire, but someone I think reading it modern day, like you and me would, I am like, this is just kind of the truth of it all. So conspicuous consumption is about how class is just so much performance and of course the more you can conspicuously consume the more you can show people that you can consume that you can own things that you can engage in capitalism to the max with literally no reason that you can just engage frivolously with it and waste the amount of waste that you can produce without doing any harm to like your person the more waste that you can produce the more the more upper class you will be, the more reputable you will be, and the more celebrated, which Murakami actually talks a lot about in Dance, Dance, Dance. He says that waste is the highest form of excellence in a capitalist society, I believe is 
I think the line that the narrator says, something like that, but he does talk a lot about that in Dance 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 and Conspicuous Consumption is kind of just all about that. I did dog ear a few pages that I was reading at the start. The worthy employments are those which may be classed as exploits and unworthy are those necessary everyday employments into which no appreciable element of exploit enters. This is really interesting. I think it's really interesting for me. Is it really providing anything brand new? No. I think because a lot of this in the year that we live in is like, oh my god, we can see this so clearly. Like everything is just kind of this performance of excess. But I think when I read a text like this, I'm just reminded a lot of The Count of Monte Cristo, actually. I don't know if that's just because it's on my brain, but The Count of Monte Cristo, Edmund, like he engages so much in what conspicuous consumption talks about as what the upper class, the leisure class prizes, even though Dante's himself, of course, is a sailor. He begins as a lowly sailor. He's very pure of heart, pure intentioned, but he engages in this whole realm and usage of conspicuous consumption to paint himself as part of the leisure class. And just so much of it is so cool because the Count of Monte Cristo also talks so much about waste, about how much you can exploit something without like, you know, seemingly wasting any money of your own or without it hurting you. As stuff like when the predatory habit of life has been settled upon the group by long habituation, it becomes the able-bodied man's accredited office in the social economy to kill, to destroy such competitors in the struggle for existence as attempt to resist or elude him, to overcome and reduce to subservience those alien forces that assert themselves refractorily in the environment. So you can kind of see how you can kind of see how it's written. It would probably put you to sleep. And I think if I try to read a little bit further into this today, I will be going to sleep. But it is really interesting if you are into um, the study of like commodity fetishism or how obsessed we are with the materiality of everything, just material objects and consumption and um, exploitation of goods and objects and uh, people as well. He talks about people in here and women as well and animals. He talks a lot about animals. There's just a whole section on cats and dogs, which was um, funny, I guess, but not really that funny, but it does talk about the difference between cats and dogs, how cats aren't as good <laughs> for something like conspicuous consumption because cats meet you as an equal where the dog recognizes you as its master. And, well, do cats really meet you equally or do they assume the form of like, I am the god here, I am the higher power. But if you like stuff like that, I would recommend Alexander Pope's um, The Rape of the Lock. One touches a lot on just stuff, things. And on top of that, it's written so beautifully. The Count of Monte Cristo as well deals a lot with that. What are other books that just deal a lot with like things? I'm 68 pages through. I'm going to continue on with this. I did start another audiobook this morning while I was getting ready just so I could keep reading. It was called Magma. Magma. Yeah, Magma. Such a nice word. Which is by an Icelandic author and it's set in Iceland and Reykjavik. Um, I didn't like it. I wasn't liking it. It was putting me in not a good mood. It was about a very abusive relationship and I was just like, I don't need to read this right now. I don't need to listen to this right now. I did get like an hour through it though and then I just DNF'd it. So I think I'm just gonna keep on reading this. Hello, it is obviously well past the end of the end of the readathon, and I just wanted to come check in with my final update because I did finish one more book. So first off, obviously I read Cat Diary by Dindi Ito. So good. I keep thinking about it, honestly. I wish, simply I wish there was more. I simply wish it was longer and it's just a nice, it's just so nice to hold. Very nice ASMR and honestly, so cute, so fun, very creepy. I love how he draws like his fiance in here, his wife. It's so, so unsettling. And there's so many, it's just funny. And so many of the thoughts that I was already thinking in my brain about living with cats. So again, I highly recommend. I gave this four stars, really, really enjoyed it. Where do I go? Where do I go next with Junji Ito? Because this was 
my first so and then after that i did finish agents of the four seasons volume one by kana akatsuki this was two stars unfortunately didn't like it didn't think it was altogether very coherent and on top of that it was so it just dragged so much it didn't really talk about anything i was interested in i was really really loving like or thought i was going to be loving rather the winter imagery and like the clash and the confrontation between spring and winter especially in like the personified forms of the seasons but again it just i just don't think it was really good the audiobook that i did finish was the inheritance games by jennifer lynn barnes three stars solid rating it was a good time i think the audiobook for me was the way to go this morning finish conspicuous consumption by Fablin. so i ended up giving this no rating just because as a piece of non-fiction and like satire i just don't really feel i need to give it a rating at all what i will say is that it takes a lot to pull out what he is really trying to say because of the prose it took a lot of work really put me to sleep even reading it in the morning or in the afternoon middle of the day with the sun streaming through the window this thing was conking me out so if you do need some like bedside reading material if if you have insomnia or something conspicuous consumption will do it for you i think he uses so many more words and so many loftier words he the consumption of words which like ties into the idea is there so i guess it makes sense because he's just using so much there's an expenditure of words in here that does not need to be here we're just wasting words and that's kind of the whole point of what he is saying anyway that the unproductive consumption of goods is honorable so interesting didn't really give me like too too much to think about because i think this is such a huge topic right now anyway and so many people are always talking about this topic but um it was funny to see i guess the satire side of things that he's talking about in the victorian period and obviously directing it at the leisure class who are like oh no what are you talking about it's not us the last book that i read so i ended up getting through four this readathon round so thank you so much for hanging out i would love to do these like once a month i think because i really do like doing the 24 hour readathons and they're always such a fun time to pick like just weird books off of my shelf that i always kind of push further and further back in my tbr that's it for me hope you enjoyed hope you're having a good day i'll see you very soon in my next one ciao